<laughs> hey guys, Crypto Dad here again. Thanks for joining me on Thursday. Uh, I'm taking Friday off uh, because there's a father-daughter dance tomorrow. So I apologize for all of you that uh, missed it if uh, you're watching this in the past. But uh, let's get things going. All right, uh, thanks for joining me, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm using some new toys here. I'm gonna pop out my window here and move it over. Wait. Christabel is here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'll just be. Okay, so Christabel's gonna hang out for a little bit. Hey, Manny. Manny was first. Uh, Perosi. Perosi. Hi. Like first. going to the moon. Calgapo, thanks for being here on a off day. And uh, okay, so you may notice I look a little brighter today. And let's see if he we has can. a new light. I got a new light. Let's see if we can take that down just a tad. That's a little better. So uh, let's check out the cool stuff that I just bought. That looks good. Yeah, it looks clear. Uh, so let's see. Corsair. All right, and here we go. Elgato. So I just kind of upgraded my setup here. You'll notice this guy has two Elgato lights. That's a bit bright. That's, yeah. I've got one uh, kind of up here. <laughs> up here. And then I've got the, uh, the, the green screen. Yeah. Oh, doggone it. No, they can't see it because I forgot to adjust my resolution. Everything's out of whack today, guys. I'm going to quickly adjust my resolution so you can see what I'm doing. Let's see if it uh, keep changed. There we go. Now you can see my whole screen. Let's go back up here. All right. So, yeah, I've got this uh, green screen thing. And uh, this, this setup is two lights. I just have one. Uh, but it's definitely an upgrade over what I had before. Uh, so that's the big news. Uh, yeah, Thursday. Uh, tomorrow is the father-daughter dance at Chandler. It's just a school dance. Oh. Let's do that. There we go. It's just a school dance. Yeah, she doesn't like to think of it as a father-daughter thing. No. No. She gets to see her friends. That's the most important thing. And uh, I guess mom decided oh. she went, yes? My, my kindergarten teacher and my second grade teacher are having a dance off. Yeah, that ought to be interesting. Yes. Okay. So anyway, that's why we're on Thursday tonight. So, uh, Perosi, go Hello, Ledger Perosi. Nano update. Yeah, I did a video on uh, the Ledger Nano. Oh, let's see where I'm <coughs> Let's go back over here to uh, Chrome, where I'm using, uh, let's see here. Yes, Josh. Actually, it's Friday. yes, it's not. <laughs> it's not, yes. Uh, we're a day early because there's a dance tomorrow. Uh, and I don't know how long it's been, but I have been reserving my Fridays for my live stream and have remained true to that for quite some time. And, uh, you know, I confirmed that Christabel wanted to go to this thing on Sunday. And so I put up the, uh, whatever Friday. you call it. Yeah, I put up the, there's a word for it, watch page. I put up the watch page early on. So hopefully everyone kind of caught. Uh, so we were just talking about upgrading our Ledger Nano S. Uh, to firmware 1.5.5, so I got a video on that. If you're having any trouble with that upgrade, um, mine went. The the biggest problem that I had was their website was slow. The server response was slow. But now that uh, it's been a week or so since the upgrade, I think that you might have an easier time of it. 
Uh, Quick question, Rex. What would happen if I don't do any updates on my Ledger Nano S for the next three years? I mean, I'm supposed to 1.5.5, 1. 1. 5. 5, but fed up of updates. What would happen? <gasps> <laughs> yes, uh, updates, updates, updates. Uh, when I first started in computer tech support, I had a customer running an old Macintosh LC which is like, uh, you know, it's ancient history now. But at the time, it was kind of a clunker. And he was convinced, thoroughly convinced, that it was a vast conspiracy by Apple to make us spend money on computers. What, what year is it from? Uh, well, the LC was probably from the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, late, yeah, because I was doing I was doing this work in '94 when he told me this, and ever since then, you know, there's always this this issue with updates. Um, now I myself recommend updates because they're generally security <coughs> updates, among other things, and usability updates and everything else. So yeah, it is a little bit uh, of a well, pain. Uh, for updates but you know people are using ledgers and they're complaining that it doesn't do this or it doesn't do X it doesn't do Y and so they're constantly updating the features they're adding new cryptocurrencies and there are security risks that they're fixing and patching and bugs that they're fixing and patching so when you're dealing with cryptocurrency uh, better a little inconvenience with constant updates than the big inconvenience of someone cracking your wallet or your wallet being non-functional when you're trying to transfer you know your life savings back and forth so I know updates are a pain but my recommendation is to stay updated what would happen if you don't update uh, probably nothing uh, except a loss of functionality and a little less security uh, and if you're willing to accept that then fine uh, but my recommendation is to keep everything updated. Your operating system, your software, your firmware, everything. I guess you are not from Chicago. Just watching news here in UK. It's cold. It's freezing in Michigan right now. It thunderstormed in Southern California today. It did rain today in Southern California. That's where I live. But uh, we got through it. We did. Damn, it's cold, yeah. It's freezing. Everything's <laughs> It's a cold day. Yeah. No, Bobby did it. Uh, no. So uh, there's, I didn't really, uh, I kind of got coughed off or caught off guard. Uh, so I didn't have a chance to pull up all the news stories for today. But why don't we just take a quick glance at what's uh, going on. Uh, we're in a bit of a down market. Um there was some controversy surrounding Tron uh, with their BTT. Uh, they're releasing the, the BTT token, which is the... Uh, guys, please, if you're going to play, please go somewhere else, please. Catch your crypto moment now. Okay, all right, let's see if I can find the story. Well, let's just Google Tron. So, as you know or may not know, Tron uh, bought BitTorrent. Uh, Tron plunges over 5% within an hour. Oh, no. Uh, so, Tron bought the BitTorrent uh, company. Uh, they're, they're a uh, BitTorrent... Bit... Bit, 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 bit. Uh... They, I'm trying to think that there is torrent software, BT, and uh, let's see if I can find the name so that I can get it out of my mouth. <laughs> Daddy got you. Okay, guys. All right. Uh, I can't see the name. Anyway, it's a bit. It's a torrent <laughs> uh, sharing site, and uh, they have a large network. And uh, Tron bought them up with uh, an eye to sort of changing the way people downloaded and shared torrent files. Now, in the past, 
or in the in the present, a lot of people share illegal content on torrent files, copyrighted content, you know, uh, not pornography per se or anything illegal, but uh, illegal in the sense that it's copyrighted material. So, uh, but there are a lot of people that share files that are legal, and uh, they do it on BitTorrent sharing sites. Now, Tron had this idea that they would, uh, the, after they bought BitTorrent, they, uh, let's see if we can find <coughs> BitTorrent. Uh, BitTorrent, right? Aha, okay, here we are. So it is a, uh, a torrent sharing website. You download the software to your computer, and then you can upload and download files. And when you download a file, if you stay online, that file is seeded. You're a seeder. People can download the file from you. It's peer-to-peer -peer software. And so Tron had the idea that uh, not only would they buy the company, but that they would launch this uh, token called BTT, which would reward people for seeding files, right? Much in the same way that uh, the Brave browser rewards people for... Uh, watching content. Uh, it's an ecosystem. So anyway, they launched this token on uh, Binance and uh, apparently Binance and Tron were partners in this. And uh, a lot of people were, you could only buy BTT with Tron or Binance token. Binance has their own cryptocurrency token. And so a lot of people bought Tron and a lot of people bought uh, Binance tokens in anticipation of this BTT release so that they could buy BTT. And so uh, the people that were able to buy BTT, great. The people that were not able to buy BTT because it sold out really quick or they couldn't connect or whatever their problem was, immediately sold Tron afterwards because they didn't need it anymore, right? Same with Binance. So that's the story is that uh, the price of Tron ramped up and the price of Binance coin ramped up in anticipation of this BTT launch. And now that it's off over, Tron is down again. Good evening to your lovely assistants. Good evening to you too, Bunny Norway. <laughs> I'm a great dad. Yeah. BitConnect. BitConnect. <laughs> oh, BitConnect is something completely different from BitTorrent. Yeah, Bit, Wait. BitConnect is a scam that, that tries to sell you their token uh, and then tells you that they're going to lend out your money and you'll get paid. BitConnect! Yeah, that's not that's different than what we're talking about. Anyway, that's kind of in the news right now that uh, Tron is down and uh, Binance are down. And there was uh, an article that said that the whole thing was a scam cooked up by Tron and uh uh, Binance. <laughs> Let's see if we can Google that one. That would be fun. Uh, Tron scam. Let's see if the news. Scam. Yeah. There we go. That's the article I was. Whoops. That's a YouTube video. Oh well. Uh, so, but the idea was is that it was a scam, a pump and dump scam. I don't know if that's true. A lot of people like to say that all, the whole crypto space is a big scam slash Ponzi scheme. No. I don't agree with that. Not, to, But there are always scammers. I mean, take the U.S. dollar. How many dollar scammers are there out there? All Every con man that's out there scams in dollars. So why would you, you know, discount the U.S. dollar just because people use dollars to scam other people, right? Mm. Crypto space is the same. It's a new idea, it's a new digital decentralized currency, and yes, there are people that scam using Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but that doesn't mean that we should say that the entire ecosystem is a scam, right? There are always going to be scammers, no matter what it is. Tonight. Yes, Christabel. I think that cryptocurrency could be better than a dollar in a while. Well, not too long, hopefully, but in a while. Uh huh. Because, uh, like compared to a dollar from maybe the 1800s, it's a lot less than one we have now. Ah, uh, yeah, like, she's talking about inflation. Like, 
25 cents then might have been a hundred dollars now maybe I don't know. she brings up a very good point dollars are inflationary uh you you take a hundred dollars you stick it in your mattress for 50 years it's not going to be worth a hundred dollars anymore they're naturally and uh, there's inflation is basically built in whereas cryptocurrencies are deflationary that's the idea hair flip hair flip hair flip Okay, I got a hair flip. Okay, so scam or no scam, it's up to you. Smash the like button. Uh, the new Ledger app on the iPhone. Ooh, let's check that one out, guys. Ooh. I think it will only work with a Ledger X, though. Or I could be wrong. Let's let's check it out. Yeah. I hope that's not my car beeping out there. It's in the front. All right. Hello. 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 All right. Of course, my phone is not cooperating. Don't click here to restore. Well, no, okay. It's okay. I can do it from here. It, it, it closed anyway. Oh, my phone. It's this light, I tell you. Insane. Light. Okay, let's try that. Also on Android, and yes, only work with the app. Setting up, yeah, setting up this Elgato light. See, now it works. Perfect. Setting up the Elgato light was quite trying. <laughs> All right, let's check it out, guys. Uh, Ledger. Ledger app. Let's just do Ledger and see what we get. Hey, check it out. There's a Ledger Live app. Let's download it. All right. Oh, my whole phone is going haywire. I was in a meeting and the the my I kept getting texted. Okay, so let's see. Uh, easily managed crypto secured by your Ledger Nano X everywhere you go. No device. I what? have no Ledger Nano X. That's fine. Right. All right. So cool. They the the app is available, and you can use it if you've got your Ledger Nano X. Those of, some people out there might be lucky enough to have a demo of some kind. Uh, mine was pre-ordered, so I will be getting it in March. So, uh, as soon as I get that Ledger Nano X, I will do a video on uh, how we use this Ledger Live app. I'm going to stop that. Uh, what do I think about XRP? <laughs> Base. Uh, yeah, so it'll work on the X. Uh, Destin is asking me about XRP. I try to sidestep questions about specific cryptocurrencies, but uh, what the heck? Let's talk about. Hello, Alan Ellis. Alan. You can still use it without the X. I have it now. Okay, so it didn't appear to. Let's try again. Get started. Ah, oh, says Ledger Nano X. You're right. Oh my gosh. Let's uh, turn on mirroring again. Because that is cool. Yay! Now, where is that? Here. You have a Ledger Nano S? Yes, I do. Oh. All right. All right. So, yes. Thank you. See? Me of little faith. Right? Uh, let's hit Ledger Nano S and see what happens. Uh, you can import your accounts from Ledger Live Desktop to go to check your balance on the go that's pretty cool Ooh. Uh, okay so go to general settings uh, let's do that right oops what the heck I'm gonna check how many people are watching uh, okay you go do that <laughs> all right so we've got uh, let's get ledger live open and the phone I need to keep prompting the phone okay good 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 yeah this is fun I'm glad you guys brought this up
All right, so it tells me to go into settings, general, export. Uh, so we hit settings, general. Uh, where's export? Oh, it says general export accounts. There we go. And then we hit export. Ooh. All right. All right, so now uh, I'm going to put this over to the side. We'll put this over here. Uh, we're going to tap uh, scan QR code. Let me let that thing get out of the way. I'm going to tap it, all right? Uh, yes, I'll give it access to my camera. Let's uh, do, do, do. Come on now. Why is it not doing it? Oh, there it goes. Holy moly, check it out. All right, so let's hit continue. Uh, we'll set the password. Uh, okay, fine. I'll put it over here. Um, hmm, okay. I suppose. Um, and I'm sure I'll have to do that twice. Yes. I'm not showing you guys because it's like it shows the keys I'm punching in, so I'm not going to reveal my password online. Not that it's that big of a deal. It is a local password. But you guys would think I was an idiot if I just showed you my password. And uh, this is what I thought they would do. They're, they're going to let me use Face ID, which is what I really want to do. That's what I love about this phone, uh, you know, the face ID. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I know my password. Um, I generally don't do analytics and bug reports, but I will because it's Ledger. Boom, I'm done. Isn't that cool? Are you okay, buddy? What are you doing down there? Are you okay? Okay. He's all right. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. This is all stuff that I've told you guys hundreds of times. Uh, you know, when you do crypto, you are uh, on your own, basically. It's buyer beware kind of stuff. Uh, you have to take responsibility for your own management of your own cryptocurrency if you lose your password if you forget your backup phrase or you know whatever you can't just call tech support and have them fix everything for you like you can if you forget your facebook password or your twitter password or whatever you know uh, or you, if you lose your uh atm card you go to your bank you flash your id and they give you a new atm card it doesn't work that way with crypto you're it's big boy stuff you have to make sure that you you <laughs> you don't lose your own stuff right it's just like uh your keys right are you the kind of person that's going to lock yourself out of your own car or your own house or are you the kind of person that keeps track of your stuff <laughs> crypto is all about keeping track of your stuff okay uh nobody's going to handhold you but look at that isn't that cool now i got uh my uh stuff on my phone so let's do something interesting why don't we buy a little crypto throw it into one of my accounts on my ledger and let's watch the phone update okay so uh while we buy the crypto i'm gonna uh stop screen sharing because this thing uh it's kind of weird it uh when the phone goes to sleep oh come on rex stop there we go when the phone goes to sleep, the screen turns black. It gets weird. All right, so let's buy a little crypto and put it in here and see what happens to our phone app when we do that. All right, so we'll need to connect the ledger in order to uh, generate. Uh, actually, I think I can. Let's try that. Let's go Bitcoin ledger black. Let's see if I can get a... Uh, two. I think that's a two, right? 
three Jed. It's like uh, hmm. That came to me. All right. Let's look at this one. From here to here. Huh. Okay, that's going out. I don't want that one. Uh, that one came in. All right. Well, let's throw all caution to the wind, right? I'll use the latest one. So this is the latest incoming transaction. This is the... Uh, actually, no. I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, connect the ledger to generate the proper uh, incoming address, right? I don't want to play around, right? I want to make sure that I've got a good receiving address. So I'm going to connect the ledger and generate a receiving address. And so I, but first let's buy the Bitcoin, right? Let's go over here to crypto exchanges. Coinbase, the easiest way to do it. I'll sign in, use my password manager. All right. I'll use my phone for the two-factor two authentication. I'm gonna have to pull that uh, ledger app to the front screen. I accidentally uh, bought some Litecoin the other day on my uh, using bank account, so it still hasn't cleared yet. I've told you guys several times whenever I buy that you want to use not the bank method, but the debit method. Because when you use the bank method, it takes like eight days to get it into your wallet. So I was very disappointed. It's because I switched cryptos and forgot to switch payment methods. So always confirm that you got debit if you're in a hurry, right? If you can wait, then just use the bank account, whatever. You have a higher limit. But we're only dealing with uh, 25 bucks worth of crypto here. Now let's buy 50. Let's buy 55 worth of Bitcoin instantly. All right, we'll confirm that. And I should get it immediately. There you go. Right, so I can go to Bitcoin now, and there, I've got the $61 worth of Bitcoin. Right, so let's go back over here to uh, Ledger. Right, I have the Ledger connected now. I just need to enter my PIN. Alright, and then once I enter the PIN, then I'm going to go into the Bitcoin app. And the reason I'm going through all this is to generate a receiving address. You have to have the device connected for it to generate the receiving address. Now you could just write this down somewhere, uh, so you could use the same one. I think that it uh, generates a, uh, you want to confirm it on the device to make sure that the device address and the uh, screen address are the same, right? You don't want to get uh, fished or scammed, right? We're going to uh, confirm that on the device by pressing the button and then copy. Now I know I've got a good receiving address for my ledger. Right? So let's go over to Coinbase. Let's uh, send uh, to a Bitcoin address, which is my ledger. And I'll send a max if I can, and let's uh, let's check this one out. Let's uh, let's get the phone ready, so we can watch it come in on the phone. Right? That's gonna be fun. <laughs> All right. Let's do that. Like I said, I gotta pull this thing over to the front. All right. Let's go ahead and send it now. All right, it's going to do that. I need my two-factor authentication. So I got to roll back to that guy. 
I don't know why it's not showing. Oh, okay. So let's get our Coinbase authentication, which is 423790. Let's confirm that. All right, let's bring this guy to the front again. Let's go back over here and wait and see what happens, All right? Let's reduce clutter. Both. Actually, we can have these both open. Let's see what which one comes in first, right? We're in Bitcoin Ledger Black. Uh, let's go to Accounts. No, let's not do that. Uh, portfolio, I guess. All right. I don't know why it, it doesn't show me the accounts. Yeah, we should see it pretty soon, unless I didn't send it to the right address. <laughs> yeah, we should. We should see it soon. Oops. Let's do that. Yeah, the wallet is empty, so I definitely sent it. Unless I sent it to an attacker. <laughs> oh, there it is. Uh, no, that's not it. Did I not send it? Hmm. Let's refresh. I should at least see pending. Ah, there it is. Okay. So uh, it's pending that I sent some. So uh, let's take a look at our phones. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so check it out. The phone right up there at the top, uh, January thirty first today. Uh, the, see, I was I was screwing around in Coinbase and didn't see that magic tick when it ticked up. Um, so I can see in the portfolio on the computer, and it immediately updated on the phone. So that was kind of cool, right? So if I were uh, shopping and somebody sent me some Bitcoin uh, to my ledger address I could see it right on my phone it would be cool if it gave you an alert when you received Bitcoin right I wonder if you can do that uh, that would be awesome uh, that would be really awesome if it just gave you an alert on your phone uh, when you received any cryptocurrency on any of the addresses that you were monitoring. But it doesn't look like it does at the moment. Because it didn't say anything about uh, give me alerts. Right? Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, if it would alert you, uh, give you a phone alert when you receive crypto, that would be nice, right? All right. So I've been babbling on about this thing, and, and you guys have probably been talking amongst yourselves. Uh, okay, Binance is accepting credit cards. That's interesting. Uh, there were some credit cards that wouldn't allow you to buy cryptocurrency. Uh, as if cryptocurrencies weren't a scam. Yeah, and that's the problem with this screen share. Let's uh, check that. I would like it to show me just... Ah, oh, there it goes. Okay. I would like to see just one account, right? So there, there. Now it shows me just that one account. And I can go back and... Okay, let me just see the Ethereum account. I like that. I thought I had more Ethereum than that. I guess I was wrong. I got some Litecoin in there, which is cool. Right? Or I can just go, what is this? Oh, okay. Just settings. Or I could look at the entire portfolio as one big basket of total cryptocurrency. Nice. All right. Now these ups and downs don't aren't very helpful. They basically just tell you what, you know, the total value has gone up or down. 
And if I transfer crypto in there, of course the value goes up, right? That's a no-brainer. But it sort of tells me that. And I really don't care to know that much. If the value of the cryptocurrency goes up, you know, like the price of Bitcoin goes up 5% over the week, it might be nice if they do that. But these ups and downs are basically uh, the total value of your portfolio, even when you send more crypto in. So it's not that helpful, but it's okay, all right? All right, so I'm gonna turn off the screen sharing there. Screen mirroring, whatever you wanna call it. What's up, buddy? Do you have quarters? Uh, there are some quarters over there for laundry. Maybe your mommy can give them to you. Uh, Alex, here's some quarters. How many do you need? Is two enough? Unfortunately, he saw the drawer where I got the quarters, so now he's raiding it. He's like, what? Quarters? <laughs> ah. Okay, so An Andres uh, Buddha likes BitTorrent, but not anymore. Okay. Drian Low, hello, hello, hello. Okay, take five then. I already did. Because, see, I got quarters, so. I got quarters. Uh huh, okay. Because, because there's trade machines. Oh, smart little boy. Yeah. We're going to go out to eat after this at uh, Norm's. And he remembered that there's like a little vending machine in their lobby that needs quarters. And every it's time... A, it's a crane machine. <laughs> it's a crane. It's one of those crane machines. Every time we go, we always tell him, we don't have any quarters. So he, he prepared himself this time. <laughs> he caught me off guard on that one. He just said, Dad, are, do you have any quarters? And I said, yeah. I thought maybe he wanted to do laundry. But no. I have quarters myself. Mm, he is preparing himself for the restaurant. I am. <laughs> uh, Look at that quarter. <laughs> I'm going to um, use the crane machine myself. Okay. She's going to use the crane machine. So, I mean, you can sort of see what my top holdings are in the bear market. Um, I, I tend to stick with the top 10 or 20. That's... That's kind of an anomaly. Uh, it's way down, but like I never sell. But uh, you know, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Uh, but some of the others are. Uh, I think we. Someone asked me about Ripple earlier, so uh, I should at least talk about it a little bit. Um, let's see. Ripple. Okay. So the question was, what do I think about Ripple? Um, I'm not that uh, I'm not a big advocate of Ripple because it's kind of it's not really the spirit of cryptocurrencies in general, which are supposed to be uh, decentralized, open source kind of things like Bitcoin. Whereas Ripple is kind of a private type of network, and uh, you know it's run by one company. As you can see, it's down, but I mean all the cryptos are down this year last year and this year so we're in kind of a, a bear market but uh it is a payment processing system that wants to make transfers uh international transfers specifically cheaper and faster uh you may be aware if you've ever tried to transfer money to another country uh, or even in your own country there's a system called swift s-w-i-f-t and that is the go-to bank transfer uh, system for transferring money back and forth across borders and between other bank accounts. Uh, that's what those routing numbers are on your checking account. So, you know, if you want to pay your bills to the power company, you can give them your uh, SWIFT code and your, or, you know, your... Uh, routing number which is basically your SWIFT code and your bank account uh, and Ripple wants to uh, make that system better and faster using cryptocurrency uh, 
so there's less fees. Now, uh, Ripple, uh, so Ripple's okay. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, as far as market cap goes, it's right up there, right? If we go to uh, marketcap.com, you can see that Ripple is number two. So it's nothing to be sneezed at, right? Uh, it's probably going to be around for a while. Its main competitor is Stellar, which uh, has been having a hard time price-wise. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people look at a cryptocurrency and judge it just on its price. You know, its highs, its lows, its current price and whatnot. But uh, there's more to a cryptocurrency than its price and market cap. So, um, so Stellar, although it's down, uh, there's still a lot of active development. And the same with uh, Ripple, you know, it just because the price might be off its highs doesn't mean that they're not still uh, making uh, progress with software and development and partners and all that other good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, someday. So, uh, Perosi Perosi is a big Litecoin fan. Litecoin is number seven right now. It's uh, a hard fork off of. It's a hard fork off of Bitcoin, uh, and it forked off quite some time ago. Uh, and it's been around for many years, and its uh, claim to fame is uh, speed. So Litecoin is another currency, whereas XRP and Stellar are ecosystems for money transfers. Uh, and then, you know, Bitcoin is a currency, Litecoin is a currency, Bitcoin SV is a currency. Uh, so there are a lot of like currency coins. And then we have like Ethereum, Tron, Cardano. These are uh, virtual machines that run dApps and can issue their own sub coins. So that's uh, another type of cryptocurrency. Can't find the mailing address for Binance. That's interesting. I could poke around and see. They probably, I know they're in Malta. Uh, <laughs> Let's try mailing address, right? Oops. Try trios still. Now we could just Google Binance mailing address. Whoops. When in doubt, just use Google. There we go. Someone else wants to know, not just you. Uh, so he probably has the same problem. Uh, I don't know if that's correct, but it might be. Uh, he got a source. Oh, he, he left his source here. And it's not, it's kind of a dead link now. So uh, let's take a look at when he did this nine months ago. So the assumption is uh, that that is an accurate address. Uh, okay, how did you find this address? Someone else sees Binance Marketing Service, Melita Court. Uh, Holly, I was pretty sure they were in Malta now. So I would kind of go with the Malta address. That's not it. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess the only thing you can do is get a hold of their uh, tech support and ask them to give you the correct mailing address. I know it's not easy to get a hold of them because they're, uh, you know, they're a foreign company 
and so they're mostly Chinese language based. I'm sure they've got some people there that speak English. And I know that they are based in Malta, company wise, uh, you know, for the purposes of their business address. So, uh, so, but I don't know. I, I, I've never had an occasion to to ask for their business address. So if this isn't it, uh, yeah. Uh, and like I said, this link here doesn't lead to anything. So that's probably not an accurate address. Oh, this guy says, I'm a US CPA. The original poster is correct. Binance needs to give US authorities a mail. -in. It need not be your physical headquarter. So that's a whole uh, bird's nest, rat's nest, <laughs> rabbit hole. Uh, tough. Yeah, so I don't know it myself. I would, I'm sort of in the same boat as you. Uh, so Perosi doesn't care too much for Ripple. Litecoin's better than Ripple, but yeah, remember Ripple and Litecoin are basically two different things, so to speak. XRP isn't strictly meant to be a currency. Uh, the XRP is, is kind of a utility token that runs on the Ripple network, whereas Litecoin is, uh, you know, its use case is a decentralized digital currency. It's meant to be uh, spent. Uh, back and forth between people. It's a transfer of value. Whereas Ripple is kind of a underlying network that's going to assist in uh, transfers of fiat currency back and forth. That's its function. Be that as it may. Uh, have I noticed that uh, the Coinbase prices are lower? I think I have noticed that. Oops, I'm signed out now. But usually they'll give you the current price of Bitcoin and it's usually less than what you see on CoinMarket.cap. I'm assuming that that has to do with what people are willing to, uh, you know, the prices people are willing to pay uh, and sell for on their exchange, right? Because they have their own... Uh, cryptocurrency exchange getting calls from the school all right so uh, I told you uh, that I would do some stuff with the uh, treasures uh, so I, th I think uh, it's probably high time I do that so uh, when you I bought this much longer cable because the treasure came with a bit of what I consider to be a short cable. So I guess this is a six foot cable. It looks longer. I think maybe it's a 10 foot cable, but it's plenty long for my purposes. I got plenty of room here. So you just, this is the Trezor M, which I, I'm beginning to really like because of its touch screen. Uh, it's pretty cool. So we plug it in. Right, and it's gonna light up. Right, and it wants you know you need to just tap it, and then you enter your pin. And what's? It's a little bit. The, the screen is a little bit small, but the nice thing about it is like with the ledger, in order to enter your pin, you have to use the buttons to move the numbers up and down. Whereas on this one, you can just tap the numbers. It's much easier to enter your pin, especially if you've got a long pin. So I like that about the treasure. All right. And now that we've entered the pin, let's check. Uh, let's see, I've got it in crypto exchanges. We just go to the Trezor wallet. 
Now you can save this link uh, or you can go to the Trezor homepage and just choose wallet and it'll ask you which kind of model you've got, right? I think I moved the Litecoin out. Yeah, you can see that there was some Litecoin in here and then I moved it out. I guess I, I thought I moved it over to the... I don't know where the heck I moved it. I can't remember what I do from day to day. Uh, let's see. Well, let's find out, right? If we want to figure where we put that. I think I moved it to the ledger white. I can't quite remember. We can plug all these things in at the same time if we want to. Let's, uh, let's just check here. Uh, sorry, wrong one. Let's, uh, let's see. We did it on Sunday, which was, uh, Sunday was the 27th, right? So let's see if we did anything on the 27th. Uh, cause I thought I had Litecoin ledger black, right? There. It came in on the 27th. Huh. But it was 0. 0.6 instead of a whole Litecoin. So I don't know if I somehow uh, lost my some Litecoin on that transaction. Because that's kind of weird. Maybe I did uh, wasn't paying attention and got hit with uh, Litecoin fees. So Stephen, Stephen M, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to take the kids to the dance tomorrow, both Christabel and uh, Alex. So we'll uh, buy them something. And uh, in your name, I think that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Christabel does have uh, one Litecoin in a paper wallet in her room, gathering dust, laminated, all nice. Told her not to show it to her friends. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Stephen. Thank you. You're very nice. I really appreciate that. Well, put your money where the masses go, right? All right, so uh, we're still back on Trezor. I emptied out my Litecoin wallet at some point. Uh, it was 0.99, and then somehow it ended up being 0.6 when I got it for some reason. I don't know. Let's take a look here. I don't know why it was 0.9. Let's view and explore. Uh, hmm. There. Well, let's not get all bogged down in that. Uh, yeah, see. Uh, the, a lot of these addresses kind of melt together and it's hard to figure out where yours went. Let's see what else I got on here. Uh, let's check Stellar. And uh, you'll notice it wants to launch an external wallet. Let's go back here. Uh, we go to Stellar. So I always forget to go back to the screen. So let's switch to Stellar. And when we go to Stellar, it says go to external wallet. Uh, and it wants me to sign in with the Trezor. <laughs> All right. Still got the Trezor, Trezor connected. Another nice thing about this, it never goes to sleep. So once you enter the pin, uh, you'll want to make sure you disconnect it when you walk away because you could just, it, it'll stay active for hours. Uh, so you want to not just leave it connected to your computer if you're going to leave. I kind of like the fact that it doesn't go to sleep. It's kind of a pain to have to re-enter your pin if you, you know, get distracted for five minutes. So I kind of like that. Little less secure. All right, cool. So now you can see that I've signed in to a Stellar wallet and I have a balance of 94 lumens on this device. Pretty cool, huh? And as you can see, you know, I put some Stellar in here and uh, I started with a little small amount. So when you transfer crypto from into a brand new wallet location, uh, if applicable, it's always good to try a little test transaction. 
just to make sure that it's working. All right, and then after I put that 10 in there, I threw a pretty nice amount, I guess maybe 50 bucks worth of Stellar into this wallet because Stellar is way down right now and I believe in Stellar. Uh, so I, I bought a little Stellar, right? The price is way down, why not? And then I moved it somewhere else. I moved it to a different location. But uh, so, that's nice. Uh, this little device supports Stellar pretty well. You know, we can send it anywhere we want and store it safely and securely on here. Uh, in fact, why don't we send some, I don't know about, see I gotta put my pin in here again because I let it go to sleep use these crazy buttons all right let's move the stellar from the treasure to the ledger why not all right let me see if I've got stellar on here I do right so let's uh, let's go into stellar on the ledger and let's see what I've got on uh, the ledger so let's go to the stellar network let's go to wallets we'll go to ledger and we'll view the account on the ledger all right so there are there's seven lumens on here so let's take this uh, public address all right let's copy it into our clipboard and let's go back over to the treasure wallet right the Trezor wallet noticed that the ledger was connected so I have to uh, like tell it don't worry it's okay <laughs> all right let's send to that uh, let's send from the treasure to the ledger how much let's do 20 right just for giggles then it hits send lumens right and then it's gonna say what is it going to say? Pop-up was blocked. So I have to hit continue. It's because I'm using Brave. Uh, allow once for this session. There. Now it wants me to confirm that transaction on this device. Uh, it's telling me that there's no memo, which I understand that. Uh, it wants me to confirm the transaction and then it wants me to hold to confirm everything I think that's kind of cool right so there uh, I sent it and it should be going out soon let's go back over here and let's see if anything happened here. I have, I'm going to refresh, sign back in again. There. Uh, so I just got the 20. And we can go back over here and refresh this one. Sign back in again. It's kind of a, you know, like a refresh. All right, got to go through all this again. All right. And there, you can see the 21 out, right? So I sent 20 from here uh, to here. But remember, guys, I didn't send anything from here to here. The only thing I did was move Stellar from one location on the Stellar blockchain to a different location on the Stellar blockchain. The Stellar blockchain is uh, on distributed across servers all over the world. There's multiple copies of it. I don't believe that I have to download the entire Stellar blockchain to my computer to use Stellar, right? These devices hold private keys. Private keys are just very long numbers that reference an address on the blockchain and the private key gives you ownership of that address. So when I moved my Stellar from this to this, I really just 
moved Stellar from one location on the Stellar blockchain to a different location. And the private key that controls that address uh, received some Stellar, right? So we can look here. This is the wallet associated with this ledger. I received 20 on that address, right? So just try to give you a feel for the way cryptocurrency works. It's the same with Bitcoin and Litecoin, right? The Litecoin, you know, a lot of people ask me, how many coins can you hold on a ledger? And I'll say, well, uh, you don't really hold coins on the ledger at all. It's not like it's going to fill up if you put too many Bitcoins in it because you're not really putting Bitcoins in it, right? You're just uh, sending transactions to uh, an address on the Bitcoin blockchain and then the private key is on that ledger. That's what the ledger does. It keeps your private key safe and secure because your private key is just like your car key, right? I don't leave my car keys laying outside because anyone could just pick up the key and jump in my car and drive away. That's basically how cryptocurrency work. You control the key. So the key in the case of cryptocurrencies is just a number. And then that number can be stored on a device or written down on a piece of paper or saved on your computer. But the most secure way to store that key is in a hardware wallet. Uh, whether it's a ledger or uh, a treasure is up to you. There are other hardware wallets too. Uh, but I prefer these types of hardware based wallets. I kind of like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it tells me there's another device connected and it's talking about the ledger. It doesn't really like that the ledger is connected at the same time. But you could have them connected at the same time. Both of these are connected mm -hmm. to the same computer. But as you can see, I can move crypto back and forth between them. Easy peasy. What utility do the big money users use to transfer coins on? Okay, uh, interesting question. Um, the big guys, uh, hopefully the guys that have, you know, that are the big guys are using their own wallets to transfer their cryptocurrency. Um, you don't really want to store your cryptocurrency on big exchanges. Now, if the question is sort of like, if I want to buy a lot of Bitcoin, what exchange should I use? Uh, you know, a lot of people, they may buy their Bitcoin on Binance. They may, uh, I think most US users, the new users are using Coinbase because Coinbase is a US based company that people tend to trust. Uh, but if you've got a bunch of Bitcoin and you want to transfer it, it it always transfers on the Bitcoin blockchain. So whether you're on an exchange or whether you're using your own wallet, uh, be it a desktop, a hardware, uh, a hot wallet, uh, a web-based wallet, whatever it is, we're still all interfacing with the Bitcoin blockchain, which is a distributed ledger made up of different nodes. And each node has a copy of the blockchain. If you download the uh, Bitcoin uh, Core Wallet, right? It is a full node wallet. Well, in, it will download the entire Bitcoin blockchain to your wallet. Uh, here, Bitcoin Core. See here, Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin Core is a full node wallet. So when you use Bitcoin Core, you will download your own copy of the Bitcoin blockchain, which contains every single transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain from the, I forget the name of it, whatever it's called, the, the, the first node, right? The Genesis block, see, I remembered. The Genesis block was 2009, January 3rd, I guess. All of those transactions are recorded in that ledger and that that big Bitcoin uh, ledger can is on multiple computers. Or if you don't really want to download the entire blockchain to your computer, which is like 200 
uh, gigabytes now. I don't know. It's it's a lot. It's big. You could download. Uh, I don't even have it on here. The Electrum Bitcoin wallet is is more of a server based. Boy, they got a bunch of them here, don't they? Ah, oh, here it is, Electrum. Electrum is a light wallet, which uh, query servers for the Bitcoin uh, activity. So it doesn't force you to download the entire Bitcoin blockchain to your computer. It's a light client, right? It just queries other nodes to get the information that it needs to transfer your Bitcoin back and forth. So if you're new and you don't want to download the entire blockchain to your computer, then I would recommend Electrum. It's better. I love to stay, but the background is making me dizzy. <laughs> Have a great one. What background is he talking about? Is he talking about uh, this background? That one? <laughs> That's not very dizzy. Well, some people don't like that. I get a lot of complaints about that. I had another one before that was even worse. Oh, yeah. It was like ones and zeros. Zooming yeah, it was that they were sort of weaving back and forth across the screen. So I apologize to everyone that is uh, nauseated by my background. <laughs> that That is kind of a mystery why that Litecoin only came in at 0.6 instead of 0.9. Very strange indeed. Anyway, something to ponder. Maybe down the road I'll worry about that. All right, so let's see. Let me go through here and see if there's any more questions. That was nice of Stefan. I like that. Uh, so transfer, you can transfer coins from any of these wallets that I was showing you. Yes, Vance, uh, today is Friday. Today is Thursday. Tomorrow I have plans. Uh, I'm going to the school dance. A I bet a lot of the kids there. There. I bet a lot of the kids there will be doing Fortnite dances. Yes, Fortnite dances. Uh, I remember an announcement at uh, Monday. They they said, not some of you may think you do, don't know how to dance, but but I'm sure you know some Fortnite dances. Okay. Principal herself. Oh, the, the principal will be there doing Fortnite dances. And there will be a dance-off. My kindergarten teacher and second grade teacher. They're dance having off. a dance-off. <laughs> <laughs> you like the old background where it, it, it moved? Oh, you know what? <laughs> let's not go there. Wait, well, we can. I think it's, uh, let's see, here it is. Yeah, I think it's... Oh, God, I don't know where it is. Oh, this is YouTube channel. Doc. Motion graphics templates. No. It was... No. Where was the other one? Yeah, let's look at the other one. Uh, YouTube channel docs... Oh, okay. That's here. Okay, here it is. Okay. So let's look at this one. No, that's not it. Let's look at this one. Oh, I think you have to. There! That's the one that kills people. They hate it. Oh my gosh, they hate it. Did it? Didn't that's the you one. also have to have a green one? Well, I have a green screen behind me. That's why you don't see the green screen. No, like the green one where it's zooming in and out. Did you have one? Uh, yes. You are correct, my young Padawan. Young This thing. Horrible. That one. There's Horrible. this one. Everyone hates it. Mm. To be burned. Mm. Let's put it back the way it was.
This one seems to be the most agreeable to most people. And I don't keep it on very long, usually. I used to spend a lot of time explaining things on that main screen, but now I tend to go here to demo mode. Are we going to go to norms? Yes, we are going to norms. After, after you're crypto dad? After I'm crypto dad, we're going to go to norms, yes. Oh, do you have your quarters? Yeah. Okay, all right, he's ready. <laughs> I put my quarters in the pocket. Ah, uh, okay. He got his quarters in his pocket. That's cool. It's this one. Yeah. Well, let's uh, take a look at our stats here. Okay, so I had about 32 peak viewers. I guess on Friday I usually get about 50. Uh, you know, I'm not the crypto lark or anything, but um, it's nothing to sneeze at. It's better than nobody watching me at all, I guess. <laughs> uh... Yeah, so yeah, that's why we're on Thursday. Oh, that's... What? It's just gone! Why did you put that? Well, I'm getting this out. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, we can look at one other... And like I said, this thing never goes to sleep. So that's kind of cool. Let's take a look at, let's go back to the treasure. Now let's go, I think there might be some Bitcoin on here. Whoops, something happened. Let's go back. Oh, it says my treasure is connected. Oh, I think it's probably seeing the ledger. So, uh, actually, I can just do it this way. I can just disconnect and reconnect. And then I'll most likely have to uh, re enter my pin, which I can handle. Ah, uh, hooey's. I entered the pin wrong. What? 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 Oh, shit. Oh, man, come on. Focus. Okay, thank God. I think I didn't want to have to re redo the entire device. All right, yes, so there is some Bitcoin on here, right? So as you can see, you know, you can switch between the different cryptocurrencies, uh, like Litecoin and Bitcoin sort of uh, interface directly with this. But if we go to, say, Stellar, it takes you to an external wallet. And I think Ethereum does too. Right, we'll go to my Ether wallet. Right, and then we say we want to use Ledger, connect to Ledger. Oh, oh not Ledger, Trezor. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And then the, it has its kind of its own Trezor interface. Right? Oh yeah, and it wants me to export my uh, public key, not private, public. And then sign in. And lo and behold, uh, it wants me to unlock. Oh, it, it's still complaining about the ledger being connected. Uh, and then here, I've got this uh, ledger address for the treasure now. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. All right, so uh, do you want to send a bit of Ethereum to this address? Let's take this address, right? 
And then let's go back over to um, Ledger Live. And I'm going to, let's see, where is Ethereum? Okay, the Ethereum is on the white. So I'm going to disconnect the black. I'll reconnect the, the white. Enter the pin. So this is the tedious part of the ledger, right? We have to keep entering this pin. All right, and I'm going to go to Ethereum. Maybe I want to make it. It's probably not even on here, is it? I make it. Fine. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I can handle it. Uh, I have to allow it by hitting the button. And then I'm going to need to uh, disconnect, or I'm sorry, take shuffle apps a bit. All right, so I'm going to remove uh, Tron to make room for the Ethereum app. Because we have to shuffle apps on the ledgers. Uh, hopefully when we get Ledger X, they'll live up to their promise and we'll be able to fit 100 apps on the device. We'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh-huh. See? See? Uh, let's take Stellar off. It's okay to remove the apps. It does not delete the cryptocurrency at all. It just removes the app. The private keys stay safe and secure. All right, so I took two off. Let's see if it'll let me put Ethereum on there now. And I'm going to demonstrate this because there was no Ethereum app, but there was Ethereum uh, stored on here, right? So we're going to access that again. There it goes. There it goes. Right? Install the Ethereum. And there. Now we got Ethereum on here. Alright, so I'm gonna enter the Ethereum app. Right? With both buttons. Now I can go to the Ethereum uh, ledger white. And there. So let's send a little crypto to the treasure address. Whoops, not receive, pardon me. Let's send uh, the recipient address. I already had it in my uh, clipboard. All right, let's send uh, point three. All right, about 31 bucks. Let's hit continue. Uh, and then we have to go to the Ethereum app and uh, confirm that transaction, All right? Gonna confirm that. All right, and then it's sent. Now uh, let's go over to my Ether wallet. Now we should we should be receiving some uh, Ethereum on this address now. So I can do a refresh, and then it wants me to like log in again. Uh, I don't I'm just too impatient I always want to do a refresh instead of just sitting there waiting it's already there right so now you can see there's 0.3 ethereum in this wallet right so we just sent it from one place to another and once again we just swapped it back and forth on the ethereum blockchain to different addresses but these devices have access to those addresses. Uh, the reason that I was able to send Ethereum out from the address that's private key is on here is because I, I gave it access by pressing the button. Right? No one could have just hacked in and uh, moved my crypto off the device without physical access to the device. And I should point that out as well. You see a lot of stories about hacks. And they don't make it clear 
that these are exchange hacks, right? Let's uh, let's do Bitcoin hack, right? You see all kinds of stories. Crypto exchange hack continues, right? They make it sound like, oh my God, you know, you buy crypto and someone's gonna steal it. Well, if you leave it on an exchange, yes, you could lose access, you could lose your crypto because you did not put it in your own wallet. You don't see a bunch of stories about the Ledger wallet got hacked, right? That doesn't happen. You put crypto in your own wallet, it's safe, right? Um, I don't see any comments on these stories. Hmm. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. I think Cointelegraph uh, Let me see if I can find a Bitcoin hack. Story. You see all kinds of stories about Bitcoin getting hacked. Da, 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 da. I can't find it. Anyway, there's lots of stories about Bitcoin getting hacked. But they're talking about exchanges, right? If you keep your coins stored on exchanges, then you're vulnerable to these hackers that are hacking into the exchanges. But if you keep your crypto on your own wallet, uh, the chances are very, very slim. There are ways, someone could infiltrate your computer and steal your crypto. If you don't have prop, if you have malware or, or uh, some kind, if you've been fished, right? But you don't do that if, if when someone sends you an email asking you to log into your account, you don't allow them, to, you know, you don't download malware to your computer by fishers. Be smart. Do, 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 do. Uh, exchange crypto exchange hack. Ah, here we go. 2018, a record-breaking year for crypto exchange hacks. You know, the, uh, a, a layman sees this and thinks it's unsafe to hold crypto, right? Because they don't know how to put it in their own wallet. People are leaving their crypto on exchanges and uh, hackers are hacking exchanges. They're not hacking the blockchain. They're just hacking this poor security on the servers which are hosting these exchanges. <laughs> it is Thursday. I'm doing, my, uh, I'm doing my stream a day early so that I can go to the school dance tomorrow with my kids and my wife. Norms? Norms. Norms is a Southern California tradition. Uh, it's kind of like a diner, like Denny's, but a little nicer. Uh, we like Norms. They have pretty good deals on like steak. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> they give you a steak and soup and a uh, salad and a dessert. Pretty good place to eat. And Alex loves pancakes, right, Alex? Yeah. He loves pancakes. Look. What do you got there? You want to show them? Dots. Show them your thing. Oh my gosh, it's green Play-Doh, and it's like makes us like there's a big hole in his hand. It's just green Play-Doh. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. It looks funny on there because of the chroma key. Anyway, that's what norms is. And it looks like I'm holding the one zero zero zero. Yeah, it looks like he's holding ones and zeros. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we're gonna go to norms. It's it's pretty cool diner. It's like being in the fifties a little bit, and it's always crowded. Everybody loves norms. All right, so yeah, we moved some Ethereum around tonight. We moved uh, some Bitcoin, if you recall. Uh, we moved, uh, let's see, we moved some Bitcoin into uh, well, my Ledger wallet. 
So now we got a pretty healthy balance on the, the ledger. Oh, I moved some Ethereum off. I was like, hey, what happened? Yeah, we moved some in, we moved some out. When you're done, can I show you this tip? Like, near the end of the stream when you're done talking Yes. About oh, you want to show them? Yeah, I can show them. Too. Okay. Yeah, we're almost done, kiddo. You want to show them your TikTok video? Sure. I, I found this audio. You're working on... Wrong video! So my daughter is into TikTok, which is uh, seven-second videos? Mostly. There's a 15-second limit, actually. Different platform. Uh, it's a video... You're freaking. Okay. Oh my God, Chris, about yeah. coming here. I want to show so you. So you guys something. are watching YouTube, uh, and she's watching TikTok, TikTok. which is uh, YouTube for people with short attention spans. Wait, I want to show you. Yeah. I want to show you something. Okay, on guys, I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, thank you for joining me on the off night. Uh, sorry, uh, all my regular Friday viewers. I'll be back again next Friday. Don't worry. Um, just gonna ruin it. Once again, uh, thank you for joining me on Thursday. But uh, remember that uh, fr from tomorrow on, I'm gonna be doing the Fridays, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, throw out any questions that you may have. I'll try to get them answered, uh, or just join in for the fun and uh, listen to my kids uh, interrupt my videos. Uh, Trezor doesn't hold as many coins, no. Uh. Uh, as far as I can see, Trezor doesn't support as many coins as Ledger. So that'll, that'll be, a we'll converse more about that in the future. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you guys again soon.